Hello everyone, here we are back in my study which is fairly untidy, you can probably see it and I can't come in tomorrow and even if I could you can't still all gather together so this seems the best way forward for me to tell you another story connected with belief and this story is from the Bible but it's from the very very old part of the Bible the Bible before all the stories and the ideas before Jesus so Jesus would have known these stories these ideas these poems that are, make up the Old Testament and this is a story that you all know well and it's the story of Noah's Ark Now, I'm going to tell you something that you might find a bit shocking because this story isn't like someone writing in a diary the events that happened that day. It's not fact as in your diaries. It's not fact as in history books. It is a way of trying to explain things. The people who wrote it lived in a world that was very different to ours. They didn't have electricity, computers. They didn't know about the rest of the world. Where they lived, they felt that was their world. So it would be like Kumbisit not knowing anything else existed. It's just there, Kumbisit. That is the world. And so some of these stories seem a bit odd and we think, well, how can that be real and true? They're not necessarily true, but they're ways of explaining what is true. They're a way of explaining belief, belief in God. So let me tell you the story of Noah's Ark before I do look lots and lots of animals and those of you who are very sharp eyed will notice that there are in twos whoops that pig's fallen over look there we are Two pigs, two cows, two snakes, two fish, two frogs, two lambs, two sheep. And on this one, we had two tigers, two horses and lots of others. Because, of course, the story of Noah's Ark is about two of every kind of animal. Let me read it to you. And this story happened after creation. And do you remember Adam and Eve? And Adam and Eve didn't do what God had told them to do and they ate from the fruit and then everything went wrong. This is the story that comes after it. Before long, People started fighting and hurting one another terribly. God wept that they were not enjoying the lovely earth that he'd made. Finally, he said, I must make a new beginning. I will send a flood to cover the earth. But one man named Noah was kind and did what was right. I hope the Noahs in the school are taking note. God told Noah to build a big boat called an ark. Then God said, gather all your family and two of every kind of animal, bird and insect. God sent the rain and Noah led everyone into the ark. For 40 days and 40 nights, 
it rained so hard that the water covered even the highest mountain. Boy, did it smell inside the ark. And the noise, the roaring, the barring, the neighing, and the mooing. But amazingly, everyone got along. Yes, even the lion lay down with the lamb. At last the rain stopped. Noah sent out a dove in search of land. When the bird returned with an olive leaf, Noah and his family cheered. Noah thanked God for saving them. God told Noah, <clears throat> I promise not to send another flood to cover the whole earth. And God made a beautiful rainbow so people would never forget his promise. That's the story of Noah's Ark. You could have such fun now in your classes talking about that story. How did all the animals keep apart? How did the pigs not fit, fall into the tanks where the fish were? How did the tiger not eat the sheep? How did the lion not eat the hamster? And where were all the leaves for the giraffe to eat? There are so many questions, aren't there? How big was the boat? My goodness me. How many people were looking after it? Well, there was Noah and his wife, and Noah had three sons and their wives. So not many people to look after all the animals. But of course, it might not have been all the animals. It might just have been the animals of that area. It might not have been the whole world. It might have been just that place where they knew. But the one thing that stands out is that God made a promise and he kept to it. And he saved Noah and his family and those animals because Noah was kind and good. And of course, Noah believed in God, which is why he did what God said. So lots of things to think about. It's a lovely story. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a chance to talk about it. Maybe draw something from it. Maybe imagine what it's like to be on a boat. Maybe think how it affects you today. Noah was kind. What are you all doing this week especially? Thinking about being kind. And next time you see a rainbow, whether it's in the sky, whether it's in someone's window on a notice, just remember, it's a sign that God loves his people and will keep them safe. Let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful story. And thank you for all the animals that are in our world. May we do all we can to look after them. Amen. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless each one of you. May God bless your families. May God bless all your animals and pets. And may you be kept safe in the name of our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.